I'm Sarah Jones and today I'm in the beautiful Apollo Bay. I'm about to go meet the team from Skylos Ecology whose dogs do a very important job. Welcome to Dog Jobs Australia. So, after a short journey along the beautiful Great Ocean Road, I'm heading to Wildlife Wonders. It's here that some special dogs are doing some great work to ensure a safe and secure habitat for hundreds of native species. And I couldn't have picked a better day for a visit. But first, I'm going to catch up with the co-owner of Wildlife Wonders, Lizzie Cork. Lizzie's responsible for this great initiative that will make a huge impact in protecting local wildlife. Wildlife Wonders will also educate people about how they can contribute to conservation efforts in their local areas. So Lizzie, we're here at Wildlife Wonders. Let's go have a bit of a wander and sure. see what we can find. Absolutely. So can you tell me how the project first started? Wildlife Wonders is a social enterprise of the Conservation Ecology Centre. So it's a project which will help us to engage people with nature and, and the, the wonder of, of the Great Ocean Road region. Um, but also, very importantly, it will raise funds for conservation programs across the region. Um, and we're really excited about that. Just the, the opportunity to have a, a reliable funding stream for environmental conservation will be just critical. Yeah, because you do some amazing conservation work here. We really do, and yes. And as you said, it's a social enterprise, so it's the actual conservation scientists that are coming together to create this place. That's right, that's right, yeah. And, and is the idea with your visitors that they come and they get a little tour? through this area? Absolutely. So all of the tours will be guided by qualified conservationists and um, that opportunity to see wildlife sort of living naturally in, in this protected natural environment will be really special. Yeah, so you, you did mention you have this huge fox, fox proof fence which we can actually spot we behind do, us here swooping right. all around yeah. and that's quite d deep into the ground so no foxes can get well, through. It has skirts either side to right. stop the foxes from digging. Yep. Um, and what's yes, that fence so made of? It, it's a stainless steel wire gauge. The, the gaps in the fence are only a centimetre wide, so okay, it's, it's so a very fair, fine pretty, mesh. Pretty predator proof there. Very much yes. so. And then a cap on the top to stop anything from climbing up the wire, oh, being able to be traverse able to, the top. Sure. That's right. Fantastic. And what sort of wildlife are you hoping to for visitors to be able to spot around well, here? The wildlife at Wildlife Wonders will be very representative of, of the Otway's fauna. So um, certainly animals like koalas and kangaroos, but also animals which are shyer and, and more difficult to see mm -hmm. out in the wild. So things like potteroos and bandicoots, which oh, are so yeah. affected by foxes and cats. And um, also opportunities for animals to be here who've n now been lost from this region. So things like paddy melons and um, eastern quolls potentially and eastern barred bandicoots who should be here but, but aren't in Have the region anymore. Yeah. Well, that would be just an amazing opportunity for, for visitors to spot those animals and to be able to connect to nature in such a beautiful natural Absolutely. setting. We've got this little that's right. babbling brook that we're walking past. Yes, that's right. And I know obviously this fence is protecting these animals from predators, but the birds can still fly in. You've got lots of wild for bird sure. life. That's right. The birds are just incredible. And the, the fence has only been closed for a very short time. And um, we think that once we're fox free and cat free, that the, the bird life here will, will be very, very happy. Yeah. Mm. So in able to, to, to be able to make sure that the area is fox free, um, that's where our, our little resident dogs come in, is that right? That's right, that's right. So working with Skylos um, is a really exciting opportunity to um, determine whether we do have any foxes and cats caught within the fence currently and um, to ensure that we're able to eradicate those effectively. And, and aside from those birds, I hear you also have some, the odd wild koala making it, making the big journey over we across do, some branches absolutely. across the fence. Yes, yes. That's so our, absolutely our, incredible. our fence is very effective for foxes and cats, but we have very high interconnecting branches across the fence. So wild koalas come and go from the site very regularly. That's lovely. And we're um, just surrounded by all these mana gums. So that's it's right. absolutely heaven for the wild koalas it to is. come in. Yes, the koalas are very happy here. I'm sure we'll spot some koalas on our walkthrough. 
Yeah, you have, have to keep your eyes peeled to see you do. up high yes. in those trees. Um, and this path is all gently leading towards uh, your big science centre. That's right, yes. So we have a, a research base here on site at, at um, Wildlife Wonders, um, which is a chance for our visitors to see some of the conservation research programs that the Conservation Ecology Centre is doing across the Otways region and um, to, to understand a bit more about some of the conservation challenges and particularly what our scientists are doing to understand more and to um, improve land management across the region. Mm. Now it sounds like a lot of that research is based around um, local species and what we can do to protect them and Very the changes so. that are happening around their environment. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, our programs are all chosen for their um, potential for conservation application and, and the impact that we can have in, in changing the way that we do things and um, helping adjust the odds in the favour of our native species. I'm about to chat with Tracy Lighton, a director at Skylos Ecology. Her dog Jimmy is helping to make this beautiful place safe for its native, soon-to-be tenants. So Tracy, you're from Skylos Ecology. Can you tell me a little bit about what Skylos does? Skylos Ecology um, primarily works with dogs to um, find all kinds of things. So we train our dogs to detect fox, which is what we're here today to, to look for, but we also do things like um, work with the renewable energy sector in understanding environmental impacts. Wow. And we also do things like invasive weed species like alligator weed. So we work yeah. with biosecurity. So dogs are trained to, it's scent detection primarily is what they're going with? That's right. We train them on scents and, um, and train and train and train them on scents. And then once we've got them reliably doing it in the training environment, we, we work out in the field. Fantastic. So things like tracking scats for, for foxes? Yeah, so what we do um, with fox scat or fox dens or evidence of foxes is we don't actually track, we um, do what's called air scenting. So we send our dogs out and they follow the scent through the air back to its location, whether it be, as I said, the den or, or the scat. And how many dogs are you, are you working with currently? Uh, at Skylos, we've currently got five dogs. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, four of them live live with me, but um, <laughs> busy but, busy life. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But we have other people who come in as well. But yeah, we have we have a lot of dogs, and they're all on different scents and 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 contributing contributing to the conservation effort in many ways. So we're here at Wildlife Wonders, which is an amazing conservation area here in the Otways. Can you tell us about what your involvement has been and how are the dogs helping out here? Certainly, well, yes, we're, we're here working on Wildlife Wonders to, um, to map fox activity mm. within the predator-free fencing. So what would be the first step when, you, when you're invited into a process like this? What do you, you want to look at first? Okay, the first thing we do every single time is we assess the risks. Yeah. So we go through and we make sure that um, we have um, the environment is as safe as possible. We have all have all of our safety considerations in mm. place. So, you know, we, we make sure that we, we have our backpacks with our first aid kits, our snake kits, our water. We have our gaiters. We have our long pants, long sleeves. It, it is, it, we, we carry most things with us in the event of, of anything happening. And then, yeah, we, we go out and we, we start covering the area um, and, and systematically work through. And as we work through, we'll identify anything we find. Mm -hmm. um, we use our GPS equipment so that we can track where the dog's been and ID where we can find yeah. any scats, which all comes up in mapping at the end. And then all of that information then goes to, to Lizzie and Shane from Wildlife Wonders and, and they make the decisions on, on what next, how do they, yeah. they manage um, the, the, the predator activity within the fence line. Yep. And hopefully we'll get to the point um, very soon where there's actually nothing left within the fence line and they can then release the native... Or well, their native species, yeah. which would just be amazing. Yeah. Especially all the ground-dwelling mammals, which will be wonderful to yeah. see them. Yeah, I know they're That's bringing right. in lots of small little vulnerable animals, the potteroos and all that sort of thing, so yeah. it'd be incredible for them to have this space completely pred predator-free and that would just feel so rewarding it for is your re team. Yeah, it mm. is rewarding work being part of something like this, you know, knowing that, that we're actually going to meaningfully contribute to, 
to not just the animals that are going to live here, but also all of the people that are going to come down the Great Ocean Road and, and learn about our incredible environment here in the Otways, because it is a very, very special place. So we're going to be meeting a couple of your lovely dogs soon, and I hear one of them, Jimmy, um, is one of your rescues and he's a bit of a superstar. He is a superstar, yes, you'll get to meet him in a minute. He um, He's a, an incredibly hard worker and um, very detailed, so we'll get him out and you can watch him do his thing. That's going to be incredible. Whilst filming Dog Jobs Australia in Victoria's Otways region, our crew chose to stay at the beautiful Alkina Lodge, the majestic Southern Ocean, the awe-inspiring Twelve Apostles, endless desolate beaches, abundant native wildlife, and the enchanting Great Ocean Road. This is the setting for the Alkina Lodge experience, three unique, architecturally designed, private contemporary residencies designed for discerning travellers who want to reconnect and refresh. You're sure to make memories here that will last a lifetime. To book your stay at Alkina Lodge, head to alkinalodge.com.au. As far as workplaces go, Wildlife Wonders would be a working dog's dream. And now it's finally time to meet the hero of today's visit, Jimmy. Skylar's Ecology's Fiona Jackson spends many a day side by side with the legendary Jimmy. He's a former rescue dog with a heart of gold and a nose for foxes. Frankly, I'm jealous of Fiona, but I'll try not to let it show. So Fiona, we're here with Jimmy. Yes. Going on, for Jim. a little wander. So Jimmy, yep, he's doing the work today at Wildlife Wonders. So. He's been busy this morning looking for fox gaps, um, fox activity in general, so potentially fox dens as well, and even scavenge sites mm. that we might find if the foxes have been eating on anything. Jimmy will find that as well. Yeah, fantastic. Yep. And he's got quite a na naff little jacket. Um, <laughs> yep. He's got a little aerial poking out even. Yes. Is that That's the GPS, that's so he can help. That's right, that's his GPS uh, collar, so we keep a, a track of him. I've got my my GPS unit here so I track myself on, on this I also track Jimmy's movements so we can map where he's been and also map any scats that we pick up. Right so then you're not just necessarily relying on your own mapping skills to put yeah. the X five marks the spot on this huge <laughs> no, big territory? No thankfully I'm a terrible drawer well, so good. That we have it all out. electronically GPS and we just put that up on the laptop when we get home and we can send that to the guys at Wildlife Wonders. Fantastic. Okay, I've already fallen for him, but now it's time to see Jimmy strut his stuff and sniff out some fox scat. Well, maybe one more pack. Search. Yes, good boy, Jim. Good find. <laughs> He's so, so ready, so keen. And I notice he really points out, he uses his nose a lot to communicate. Yeah, he does, which is very helpful. It's, for now, it's, it's fine, I can, I can see where it is. But um, if we're out somewhere and it's, it's a lot thicker vegetation, yeah. that point is really helpful and can save a lot of time. So how long did it take to train these sort of skills? Uh, I guess it varies on the dog, but mm. for Jimmy, I mean, he was up and running say in three months. Wow, that's yeah, incredible. So took about three months and that was his scent work, but also making sure he operates safely in the environment as yeah. well. So getting all our safety communication in as well as our detection work. Jim, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> what a good dog. And I guess one of the negative stereotypes about rescue dogs is maybe that, especially an older dog, isn't able to learn anything new and yeah. you know if you don't have them from a puppy you can't train them in a specific way but Jimmy's really proof that that's not the case. <laughs> no I don't think I think there's yeah there's never really any absolutes in dog training if you ever if anyone ever <laughs> thinks there is the next dog comes along to to disprove it and I think rescue dogs and dogs of any age could could do this work it's just about them having the the willingness and the want to do it. And it's about finding the right motivation and you see with Jimmy there, he's, yeah, he'll do this all day for the ball. Yeah. It's, it's simple work, but it's, it's fun. That's great. This is all a game for him, you know, so it's like a big kind of treasure hunt. So mm. he goes out and finds the 
today it's been fox scats and part of that game, that treasure hunt, is then the reward, which is just more play, except this time it involves me. So How exciting. It's what, a win-win, yeah. What a dream job for Jimmy, because Jimmy's obviously a rescue, as we talked about. Yeah. So he's really landed on his feet to come and live with you and have this amazing relationship and then have this dream job where he gets to go out and play every single day. Yeah, well, he has a job now. He has a human now. He actually has a pack now. He's got, mm. you know, his, his, brothers, other, and his brothers and sisters yeah. that he takes care of back home, you know, he's got Tracy as well. So his life for a, a, a dog that maybe didn't have the greatest start, his life is now very full and very, very much just full of fun for him. Mm. And that's that's what it's all about for us. As long as the dogs are out there and having fun, if they're not having fun, they're probably not going to be doing a great job. You're probably not going to be getting the best data. Yeah. So when they're having fun, that's just so important in every aspect. We love um, rescuing dogs. It's um, wonderful to be able to bring a dog in, say at about 15 months old, that, that hasn't had, you know, maybe the best start in life. Yeah. And, and we bring them in and, and make sure that, you know, they've got key, key personality traits, like they like to problem solve or, um, you know, they don't want to chase animals. That's a big one in conservation. Um, and then, yeah, we give them a home and teach them how to, teach them how to find their odour and, and do all their, do all their work and it's really wonderful giving these guys a home and teaching them a job and then they come you know they come out of their shell and, mm. and their confidence grows and yeah so yeah I've got to say it's not just because I mean it's I've got puppies as well so you know I'm not one or the other I, I, I have both but I don't see any difference in in whether or not their work ethics right or, or, or the job that they do so yeah. I, I and really actually as you that. said when you're when they're a little older as a rescue you actually have an insight into their personality that's right yeah so how do you gauge those sort of qualities are you speaking to the to the foster organization <laughs> absolutely foster mums and foster yep. dads know their dogs yep. as well um, so we do talk to them very very much and often um, they'll let the dogs come and stay with us for a little while and okay, we'll, so you get, and we'll, we'll get gauge a bit of an idea of whether or not they they want want a job really yeah you said the foster mum i think of your last dog um when you were asking about how how distractible that dog would be with with other animals had yeah. a nice little story for you yeah rex rex um we adopted three months ago and um he's foster mum we, we saw him on a on a rescue site and and his bio looked fantastic mm. so we thought oh we'll, we'll give him a call and she said we said oh how is he with other animals and she's like fine i lost him the other day and i and we found him he was he was in the chook pen laying down with all the chooks around him eating the bird seed which is what you want. <laughs> Which is exactly what we want. So, of course, if your, your dog is out tracking, you, there might be wallabies and things jumping by. You don't want them to be set off by another animal. You want them to be <laughs> that's, focused. That's right. Um, look, our dogs need to really be rock solid in the natural environment. Um, we don't want to create any hazards in the natural environment for what we're there to protect. Mm. Mm. So um, one thing we need to make sure is that our dogs are rock solid when it comes to not chasing animals and, yeah. and, and going for things that maybe not their target. ensures the safety of the other animals, but also your dog's safety, which That's would be exactly paramount right. as well. Yeah. That's so exactly. welfare, it sounds like, is a really strong focus for your the dogs that you work with? Yeah, safety and welfare is key for everything in, mm. in Skyless Ecology. We are very, very keen to, to make sure the dogs are at the same, treated with the same safety level as us. Um, so through everything that we do, through our, our safety documentation, which I'm sure everybody in the, in the working world understands, our dogs are, are up there as equals with us. I believe you used to work with search and rescue dogs a long time ago. I did. Um, and you were actually responsible for some of the uh, search and rescue framework um, that ensures their, their safety. Yeah, so um, back in 2012, um, I was part um, of developing the Australian Search Dog Framework. Um, I was part of the Attorney General's working group to develop that and um, wrote a, a federal policy actually wow. to ensure that there was consistency of standards um, across Australia. And, and I believe that that's still, you know, being invoked and worked. Um, it was incredible, incredible amount of work, but really important. And you are currently president 
of president-elect. President-elect, okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like being Biden. Yeah, yeah exactly, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and what's, what's that organisation all about? Um, the Australasian Conservation Dog Network. That's right. Um, and it is a group of just phenomenal people from around our country who do brilliant stuff with conservation dogs. We've got members that, um, well, you would know, um, um, the University of Sunshine Coast, um, they do bear the koala dog after yeah, the fires. I've seen him with yeah. his little mittens on and he's a rescue. He's a rescue as well. As so well. Another, another strong point for, for rescue dogs. Yeah, he's amazing. And, and so are his handlers and trainers mm. and researchers. They're brilliant. Um, we have quoll dogs up north. We have got um, people doing biosecurity with dogs on islands. And, wow, yeah. yeah and, um, and, then, and then there's just so many of us that are just quiet achievers just out there doing the work and um, and there's so many of them in the Australasian Conservation Dog Network. That yeah, it seems like more and more it's becoming becoming a recognised um, way to handle land and protect our species. Yeah, they're an incredible monitoring tool, dogs. You mm. know, they, they have um, skill sets that you can't find in any other monitoring tool and, and couple them with standard monitoring tools like cameras or hair traps or sand traps and, and have a dog in there as well, you just get different data points and you can get a fuller picture. Yeah, a bit more precision maybe as well. Yeah, well, you know, one of the greatest risks we have in environmental management today is, is actually gaps in data. And so we need to gather that data so that we can make the decisions we need to make to protect the environment. And dogs are an incredible way to help do that. Rex. I think if you look closely enough, you can see a smile on his face. He must be pretty pleased with himself after landing this plum job. Good boy. <laughs> so, Tracy, this is Rex. This is Rex. And he's your newest addition. He is. He is. He, he came to us in August, mid-August, so not very long at all, and he is just gorgeous, aren't you? So we can see you're definitely a different sort of energy than <laughs> from Jimmy. He's a bit more full of beans. He is a bit more full of beans. Do you feel like uh, he and Jimmy will do similar sort of roles or would oh. you think he'd be doing different sort of work? Look, this guy is so chill and so easy to get along with. Um, I think he's going to do very, very special work. I yeah. don't think we're going to focus on, on um, fox control or anything like that with him. I think he's going to be ready for a special critter, like a threatened species, I think, because he's... Well, this is the dog you were talking about who was found in the chicken pen, ignoring the chicken, eating yeah. the chicken meal. So he's obviously very gentle around other species. He's gentle just in nature. Mm. He's a very good boy. <laughs> nice work. Do a victory lap. Uh, it really is the little things with rescues. Today. Yeah, it really is. Rex. Oh, come oh, here. But you got come the ball over there. I know, I know. I know, it's here. It's here. So we will, he loves food at the moment, but our goal is to get him really into this so this can be his yeah. reward as well. And we think it's working. Yeah, I'd say it Don't is. We? Only in three months, he's got his emergency stop happening. He's got his recall rock solid and his scent work is going great. And we've been teaching him a uh, different alert, so you saw Jimmy sit, uh, dropping, mm -hmm. well Rex sits and points, so oh, just to okay. get a bit yep. more distance between the target and, and Rex's nose, so yeah, we're, we're, we're thinking long term And Rex him. is of course another rescue, so another really great... He is. Great rescue story where he he's really landed on his feet and shown that he's really capable at, at everything he learns. Yeah, Rex was found wandering around up near Grafton. Oh um, wow, and so he's made a big journey to yeah, get here. Yeah, we think he might have got fired from a sheep farm because right. he really isn't an interested in other animals yeah. really. Okay. Um, so yeah we think we think that he's um that he, he, he yeah. didn't want to work on a sheep farm and perhaps he got you know fired. Yeah fired from one job but has landed on his feet with the best job ever. I think so yeah, yeah. I think he thinks so too. I think so. Well, I have had an amazing day here at Wildlife Wonders, meeting the team from Skyless Ecology, especially our good mates, Jimmy and Rex. If you'd like to find out more about what they do at Wildlife Wonders, check out their website below. And remember, if you've missed any episodes of Dog Jobs Australia, you can always catch up on our YouTube channel. See you next time. <laughs>